And we also have the um, uh, CSS folks for, for doing all the reactive cases. So here are a partial list of all the customers that we had for this fiscal year 2012. Um, as you can see, the momentum, momentum are there. Some of the codes that we have from some, some customer on the left is, you know, you're looking at, like, I can load large, large amount of data, and it's, it's way past my uh, meeting my SLAs. Uh, queries from folks from the high V, folks in the retail industry, that their um, queries uh, finished 20 minutes, used to take 20 minutes, now it takes in seconds. And of course, the direct edge uh, trading company that offer 100 times query performance. So here's a quick, again, an overview of what we had with the um, V1 architecture. As you see on the left, um, um, the, the main thing is that the larger footprint that we're seeing on the left side with um, the um, control node, you have do double redundancy in, in the two servers with the control nodes, same with the management node. And then, of course, you have the landing zone and the backup node. So here on the data rack, we have all the compute nodes, and it's associated the um, uh, storage arrays. And as you note, these are the same that we were using in the V1. For the V2, we obviously reduces the hardware footprint of all the control node by virtualizing um, the control node and the management node into a single um, host. And um, so we're looking at lower. At the same time, we remove the uh, SAN and using JBOT and fiber channels therefore reducing the cost dramatically. Um, and also with the advent of column store, we're looking at 70% uh, in store saving with a typical or up to 15 times compression ratio that we see with X velocity comp uh, compression. And of course, we're using all the, um, uh, take advantage of the Windows Server 2012 to replace again the same and using high density, low cost SAS JBOTs. So here's the, um, uh, the, uh, an overview of a, what we call a basic um, uh, architecture of the new appliance. So as you can see, host one is where we store the um, uh, management node and the control node. And the three and four is the compute nodes uh, attaching to the JBOT. And the host two is where we, um, is this, uh, passive for failover um, uh, purpose. So we added um, the double the memory to 250 gig from uh, the V1. Uh, we increased this using the InfiniBand uh, FDR, which has a rate of 50 gig uh, per second. And then again, moving from the SAN to the JBOT, uh, the, decreasing the cost. And now that the, um, we, prov we give the redundancy, the option of redundancy in the backup and the landing zone, uh, customer can use their own hardware to customize their needs. They can have multiple backup, multiple landing zones uh, for redundancy, high availability, and also um, parallel loads. And of course, you know, the flexibility of scale unit concept in which they can actually start out with a quarter rack, which is uh, a two node for an HP and three node for a Dell, and they can just sort of like add uh, the additional scale unit as they go along. So here is the, um, uh, again, a, a more detailed look at the architecture. So here we have what we call the back plane, which can scale up to six U's. And this is where we have the double redundancy of the InfiniBand and the Ethernet, and um, the management and control node that we talk about, and also the failover node. And at the bottom that you see is the, um, uh, what we call a base unit, in which you, know, you start out with a quarter rack, and you could come with a two HP server, and then the JBOT is attached to it. So the bottom line is the two compute nodes that goes with the, the JBOT associated with. So with this, we're looking at 15 terabytes of uncompressed data. So what this really means is that it, we, we actually would, um, get started with a lower end um, 
with a department such as you know um, a small department that that can that needs the MPP powers, but it doesn't require a some C level type of, of of approval. They can actually you know with a, probably a director level um, a budget, they can actually go out and go out and get onto an MPP system and get started with a quarter rack, and then they can actually work their way up with you know a subsequent uh, scale unit to um, scale for their needs. So again, this is the same um, uh, architecture, but on the, on the left side, we're just showing you the Dell, which is two nodes. And on the right side, uh, I'm sorry, on the left side is the HP, which is the two node. And the right side is just a little bit different with three node system. And here's the, all the topologies that you can, uh, can, um, can, uh, can order. So like I talked before, you start with a quarter rack here. It's going to come with a base, and then here are the two compute nodes. And raw storage is about 15 terabytes. Um, and with the capacity, uh, 50 terabyte to 220 terabyte. So what this means is that, that if you use the regular raw store page compress, with the average um, uh, page compression of 3.5, you're looking at capacity about 53 terabytes. And if we're using the 15 time column store compression ratio, you can store up to 220 terabyte with just a quarter rack. And then you can scale up to uh, the half rack, which is four note for the HP, uh, the th three quarter rack, six note, and so on. And you can go all the way up to 56 uh, compute nodes, which would um, uh, gives you in the petabyte range. So here I'm going to talk about um, the software architecture. Um, so as you can see, all the hosts run the Windows Server 2012 standard, and then all the VM runs the Windows Server 2012 standard as a guest operating system. All the fabric and workload activity happens in the Hyper-V virtual machines. Um, the fabric, VM, the management node, and control node share one server, which gives you the lower overhead and smaller footprint. And of course, the all the